just beat it to death. Why don't you go on and do it? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was afraid my stuff was sticking. Uh huh. And when your stuff sticks, Six. you're stuck. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Laban Johnson. I'm Fat Giles Bly. <laughs> yes, the boy looks like he's got double reverse mumps. There has something happened, sir. Look at that. Uh -huh. I look like I have a goiter, and I'm all I think swollen you've been up around right with Alvin the Chipmunk. Look at that. I have been storing <laughs> my nuts for next winter. Is what uh -huh. Look at it, all puffed up. I have had some kind there. of an adverse reaction to back medication. Oh! medicine. Oh, he's had a pain in his back for a long time, and not to mention the pain in the lower part. Well, never mind. Well, I wore my apron today with my name on it because last week you forgot it. <laughs> the, the biblical name. Yes, Laban. I didn't. I believe that writer, that uh, person yes. wrote in did. And Isn't that uh, right, Charlie? Uh-huh, it is. <laughs> but anyway, there it is. It's, with a very it's, fine it's, Sony oh, microphone, yeah, well, microphone perched on beside it. it, I might add. Uh-huh, <laughs> that, that name is from Genesis. It's in the Bible and been in my family for a long time. That's true, it's biblical. That, so don't true. you forget about it one time. At all, period. At all, period. Well, let's get the witch in here and see what we're supposed to be doing today. Oh, Oof. it's <laughs> a been close a bumpy fly, ride. <laughs> almost knocked one of my puffy jowls uh -uh. off. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh huh. I think I got, I don't have the mumps. Because if you have the mumps, you see, you'd have swollen down in here. And so, mm -hmm. my doctor said. I, I would be using my new glasses if I had them, but one of those. Uh, he couldn't see uh, to find them. One of the, no, one of those places that do uh, eyeglasses real fast. Mm -hmm. uh, two weeks ago, I took my glasses and said, you know, we'll have your new lenses in it in two or three days. It's two weeks later and I still don't. Uh -huh. I'm not happy about How's it. that for fast service? Mm -hmm. Oh, if I could say the name on TV, oh, I would love I to do it. Oh, I know you would. Well, go look, on ahead. Well, head. stop messing with that hair. stay right. Well, it's kind of cut funny. Did Mr. Steve, the, yes. curl, the uh, hair twirler, you do know, that? I have got to not go in there after he's been out. You know, he has lost his touch. You know, he doesn't sober up as fast as he used no, to. No, he doesn't. It's, it's just That's terrible. the big problem right there. You know, last time he touched my hair, it's still got stripes in it. You see, it looks like yeah. a skunk. I look like a skunk. He put the Clorox uh -huh. to me, and I look like a skunk to this day. Well, you know that my he problem... He got right huffy that we mentioned the it on the air. The, la the last <laughs> time I was in there, he had had a cancellation, and he had plenty of time. It took nearly 40 minutes to cut my hair to give me an old-fashioned cut, he said. You know, to just be perfect and stylish for someone my age. <laughs> Ooh, and I would. Hit it. Anyway, dear partners, me and Old Crow, my wife of 64 years. Oh, that's terrible. Want to know if you'll cook up some kind of Tex-Mex deal. <laughs> We're going to put on a reenactment of an old time hanging and need to feed some folks. And it's <laughs> thanks, Mr. Misery Pass of Dead Man's Gulch, West Virginia. Oh, that's a nice area over yes, there. Yes, it really is. Not much going on now. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to do something called chili stew, chili which is neither stew. chili nor stew, but smells like chili and looks like stew. And who <laughs> sent it in? It, oh, oh, excuse me. I'm sort of like Floyd. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, 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 let me see. Uh, <laughs> sent in by Edwin Bain. Oh, Bain of yeah. Lynchburg. You know, Mr. Bain has sent us a lot of stuff yes. in the past. Chili cook, too. Mm -hmm. And um, my recipe today is a sour cream and green onion cornbread. And it was sent in by Patricia and Roy Leffler of Marion, Virginia. I, aren't they the magicians, I'm Patricia not. and Roy? I don't know. They disappeared. <laughs> 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 i got to start out with a little with, olive okay, oil. You, I'm just going to put a little in there, and we're going to chop up a couple of vegetables real quick. And uh, and this is interesting, a little bit of sesame oil. It only calls for an eighth of a teaspoon. That's boink, about that much. Not very much. A couple of drops. Mmm, that smells good. I love to smell sesame oil. And I'm going to heat that real hot. And while it's heating up real hot, I'm going to chop up a, a green pepper, which I have taken the cap off of and uh, also some on onion and a uh, little garlic and some celery. And I'll just be chopping and chopping and chopping right now, getting that prepared to get in there and saute it, because you must saute it first, okay? Well, my cornbread, the green onion cornbread, you have to have a cup of chopped green onions. And I want to show you a little, little secret, little thing here. You use the white and the green part for this recipe. and. Wash your onions, of course, but then leave, if they've got a rubber band on them like they frequently do, leave it on there because it makes it a lot easier to chop. And just chop right on up through the green until you get about 
a cup of chopped onions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. These are our scallions or green onions. And They're stallions. Scallions. Oh, scallions. excuse me. Put that over there so everybody can see it. Now, I think that looks to me to be about a cup. So let me put this it. This recipe's up. kind of funny. It says it calls for a big old bunch. <laughs> a big bunch. Big old big bunch. Big old bunch of celery, which I'm chopping up right now. Big old bunch. All right, and oh, that sesame seed oil smells so Ooh. good. Oh, I've mm. thrown it all I over love the it. counter. And you don't know what's been on this counter. Always makes me nervous. Now, let's see, how much do I have in there? Do I have a cup yet? Nope, need some more. Take You're this. losing your touch. I remember well, a time when you could do a cup without even looking. I know, well, you know, I've gotten out of practice and ever since I ha hired Jasper, my cook, and um, I just don't have it like I used well, you, to. Jasper, huh? Mm -hmm. hmm. He's just a ghost of the cook he used to uh, be. No, that's Casper. Oh, that's Casper. That's right. That was Jasper, the friendly ghost. Okay, I'm going to go on ahead and throw that in there All and right. start sauteing that stuff in that oil. And you know that's going to be You know, good. There, uh, we get a lot of letters from people say, that say, why don't you cut everything up in advance? And what's my answer to them always? You don't have it cut up at home. No, my answer isn't that at all. What I is always it? people say, "Why don't you cut all that stuff up before you get on the air, making us?" Well, and I always tell them the same thing because the show would last two minutes. Right. That's why. And you know, quite frankly, we're real busy doing other things, and we don't have enough time to do four or five recipes like some of the other high-priced people. All right, now with a, a mixing bowl, we're going to start adding ingredients for our cornbread. And uh, while you're doing this, you need to set your oven at 425 degrees and put in a cast iron skillet. So it'll and, be warm enough. And put a stick of margarine into it or butter and let it warm up and let the margarine or, or butter melt. Now, if you don't have a cast iron skillet, and a lot of people today Perhaps you have don't. a cast iron stomach. Oh, absolutely. You can use a a me any other metal baking pan, but it does need to be hot with the melted uh, butter or margarine in it before you do this recipe. So get that all done now and while you're doing all of this chopping and getting ready for it. Other than that, the recipe is a lead pipe cinch. You know lead pipe cinch, Lead don't pipe you? cinch. Mm -hmm. I'm putting in these chopped up onions in here also, you'll notice. And I'm not going to chop any garlic because I have a social function after the program oh, no. today. A social function, and I don't want to be stuck with smelling like garlic. So you know, I got I, this stuff, which is the next best thing. It's already pre-chopped. Put a couple of wads of that in there. How much? You it know, call my for? friend Marilyn gave me for Christmas last year this little thing that she got somewhere that you can actually, after you chop garlic or onion, you can put it on your hand and do it all around, and all the scent. Uh, goes on to that. Is and that then, so? Yeah, and it actually works. Calls for two or three cloves, and we're just going to saute that oh, a girl. little bit. You would And then want I have my beef standing by. <laughs> well, not really standing Stand by. Stand by your, your beef. beef. Anyway, right. uh, and uh, we'll be doing the beef and browning that in a little bit. I would suggest that you don't do this exactly. Well, I, what I'm suggesting you do is saute one or the other first and then put it aside and then saute mm -hmm. the other. If you try and do them both at the same time, you never get your beef brown and seared on the outside. Now, Larry, with, with my cornbread, you start out with two cups of self-rising cornmeal. Or corn, yeah, cornmeal is the best way to say it. Now, you can use any kind of self-rising cornmeal. I'm using today uh, a popular southern brand, but you can look around at whatever you've got. And if it's stone ground, that makes it all the better. So uh, you put in your two cups of um, cornmeal. And then we're gonna put in, we'll throw our onions on in here now, cause we gotta do some liquid measures. And I'm going to need three quarters of a cup of buttermilk. And I'm using non-fat buttermilk today because it will be a little easier on me. All right, there's a three-quart 
to three quarters of a cup of buttermilk and you just pour it on in, let it ooch on down a little bit. And we're gonna follow that by three quarters of a cup of oil. Now I'm using, because again, it's a little bit better for me, three quarters of a cup of corn oil, but you could use canola or anything else. If you want the real southern taste, you probably ought to use corn. What you doing, Black? Playing around with Jim Hammerstrom uh -huh. on camera one. He's trying to keep up to me. Yeah. I appeared at a fundraiser at one of those other PBS stations some time ago and wore some poor camera guy out, came to me and, and complained after it was oh. over. <coughs> He said, you, you just don't give me any opportunity to even focus on anything. And I said, well, you need to widen it up a little ah. bit. Loosen it up. Well, anyway. Now, I'm going to dump in two tablespoons of sugar. There it is. I was afraid to count pre on Pre-measured. Pre-measured. Pre -measured. Well, you know, now that I'm retired, I've got time to pre-measure <laughs> stuff. And then, of course, if it's been over here for a while, it's liable to turn lumpy uh -huh. on you. So... And you remember Lumpy, you don't want to mess with him. No, you don't. All right, one egg goes into this now. You could use egg beaters. Remember that if you want it more healthy. One, use egg beaters, don't use a real egg, although the real egg is just fine, unless you got major cholesterol trouble. And finally, I'm gonna put in three quarters of a cup of sour cream. Which is also Fat-free. I notice. I imagine you'll weigh less by the time you eat this recipe than you did when you started. Mm -hmm. It is so non-caloric and right. fat-free. And that's three quarters of a cup. What do you think of fat-free? Uh, well, uh, sour cream. Right now, it's what I eat at home, and I guess it's okay. Uh, I don't get real enthusiastic about it. Uh, in some dishes, but it, yeah. it does okay in, uh, in you know, especially if you're gonna make a salad, it's okay there. And sometimes what you get in a bakery product is maybe not exactly like what you want, but but it's, it's okay, and I've gotten used to the taste of it. Okay, I've sauteed these veggies, and they do look wonderful. They're all right there, and they're perfectly sauteed, and I'm gonna transfer them at this point to the entire counter and part of the floor. Oh. Looks like I missed. Anyway, I'm gonna transfer that to the, the big old thing I'm gonna do it in, and you need to start out with a fairly nice large uh, pan because this makes quite a bit. And now, having done that, I'm going to take some beef and uh, you can use a chuck or, well, I don't know, you can use any number of things. It calls for pot roast or English roast. Anyway, this is, uh, I've chopped it all off. Now I'm gonna brown this. You need to brown your beef real good before you start assembling everything all together. And we have some wonderful stuff that goes in this after a while. This is a fascinating recipe because it calls for curry and chili powder and red pepper and all sorts of neat things. So oh, get that on there and do it. Well, while you're browning the meat, I will uh, give my ingredients for my cornbread. You need two cups of self-rising cornmeal, three quarter cup of milk or buttermilk, preferably buttermilk, quarter cup of vegetable oil, one egg, two tablespoons of sugar, one cup of chopped green onion, including the green stalk, and three quarters of a cup of sour cream. You'll also need a stick of margarine. Okay, Larry? Am I supposed to give mine now or just play around? No, you can give yours around. later. You, you've got so much to do there. Well, I really, well, all I, all I can do really at this stage is just to brown this right, beef, well, and so me, that's what I'm doing. All right, let me mix this up. Now, you don't need to use any fancy apparatus on this. Just put it all in a bowl and use a, a spoon. I've got a nice wooden one here and just stir it until your egg is stirred in real well. You don't have to do this in a mixer. It'd probably be better if you didn't. We need some bowls. And I'll just continue to stir this around until everything is well mixed together. But again, be careful. It would be better to do it by hand you'll get the wrong kind of grain on this if you do it in a mixer. So just stir it around till all the dry ingredients are mixed right in. And this looks real good. You know, it's a pretty 
uh, it's it's a very pretty recipe. It really and is. Let me get, You'll see the end product in a minute. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Let me, let me get that so that you can see it. We have people here from some of the major food magazines taking pictures of it as we speak. And here it is Isn't in the pretty? iron skillet. Yep. And that's what it looks like. It's gorgeous when it's finished. And uh, we don't have another iron skillet, so I'm not going to do that step for you. But here, here it is. This is in my mama's 10-inch iron skillet. And we'll cut it in a minute when Larry is finished with his chili. I've turned it up as far as I can turn it. Oh, Doris is telling us to turn she's it up. She's telling me to turn up the heat. Turn that Doris up. is never, she's never warm enough. She's got a couple of sweaters on. <laughs> uh -huh. Middle of summer. I'm just browning this beef. It's taking its good old time. She That's what she was so telling much me. To Harold, it's pathetic. What's that? Turn it up. Turn it up. <laughs> well, while I'm doing that, I can add some of the other stuff to this other okay. pan while I'm waiting for that. It calls for a can of tomato sauce. And I'm going to go ahead Salsé. and saute uh, do the tomato. That goes in there. And you hold on to the can. I'll tell you why. Because you're going to have to, even though it doesn't call for it, you're going to have to add a little water, as you often do, because uh, you've got to cook it for about an hour, hour and a half, something like that. Depending on how good your beef is, you may have to cook it all day. <laughs> but anyway, you will, it will uh, require some additional water. So just go on ahead and put some in there. And Doris says that to get this stuff out of this little bitty can, that what you should ought to do is open it from both ends and push it through. So this is a Doris tip. Whoops, that's not going to work. So we'll just go right on ahead and see how smart Miss Doris can be. Now be careful, you don't want to hurt your little fingers. I assume that what you do is just take that and push it through just like, oh, look at that. Isn't that brilliant? Johnson, look at oh. this. You can yeah. be learning oh, something instead of eating that. stuff on the side. Oh, it just oh. came right out with the lid. How nice. Well, I don't think you want the lid to go in there. I guess you're supposed to take that off first, mm -hmm. but that works okay. I and mean, that, that gets it right out of there. Isn't that amazing? It really does. And then you can use that can to cut little bitty biscuits with. <laughs> you're right about that. And squish that around in there. And then in a couple of minutes, we'll add to that our beef, which is still browning. And then we'll put all the secret ingredients in. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I'll put it all in there in just yeah, a couple of minutes. Just a couple of minutes. So anyway, let me give you my recipe while I'm waiting for this beef to come a little further along. Would you stir that around, John, while I'm reading my recipe? I will. Seems to be a little slow today for some reason. Uh, chili stew sent in by Edwin Bain, Ed Bain of Lynchburg, Virginia, calls for two to two and a half pounds of beef cut in three quarter inch cubes or smaller. I prefer to chop them up a little smaller than that. A large onion chop, two to three garlic cloves crushed, one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce, and I would put a little water in with that, one six ounce can of tomato paste, one large stack of celery, well, a large stack of celery right. calls for a chop. Uh, half a green pepper, well, I think I put the whole thing in there. Two tablespoons of flour will go in in a couple of minutes. Uh, two tablespoons of olive oil, an eighth of a teaspoon of sesame oil, and you have to go a little bit light on that sesame oil because if you don't, it'll overpower everything. Four to five drops of hot oil is optional. I'm not using any today. I didn't have any hot oil, couldn't find any. Too lazy to go out and buy it. One and a half teaspoon, tablespoons of chili powder coming up here in a minute a half a teaspoon of ground cumin, a half teaspoon of curry powder, quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and salt and pepper to taste. So, there we go. Let's pretend like this is thoroughly brown. We will definitely have to pretend. Yeah, we will, because I don't know why. We're going a little slow on that today, and we're gonna go ahead and add the beef now to all of this stuff in here. If you wanna try and not get all that grease in there, it would be nice, but I guess we'll go You know, I think the reason they call it chili stew is that you use larger pieces of beef. Because well, you're probably chili, right. You, you, you would, would uh, use little tiny pieces. You'd mince or, yeah. or chop up your beef real, real now small. We'll bring this over and put it on. <laughs> Woo! What world was that? Well, it's got wet stuff under oh, it and it's making funny and noises. the stove is making noises at fly, <laughs> but many people do that. Well, anyway, now the next thing you got to do is you got to add all your stuff that goes in it. We have uh, one and a half tablespoons of chili powder goes in there. One and a half tablespoons. That's a tablespoon. That's one. And there's about a half that goes in there. 
Add a half a teaspoon of cumin. There it is, half a teaspoon. Just about that much goes in there. Interesting combination of flavors. Uh, half a teaspoon of curry powder. I thought that was the right interesting thing uh -huh. for this recipe. That goes in there. Well, boy, it does have a lot. And of a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne. Don't overdo that because you just burn someone's lips right plumb off their face. And that goes in there. And also, you have to add uh, a little bit of flour to it. How much flour does it call for? I can't find the flour. Uh, two tablespoons of flour. And it doesn't matter when you add it because it's going to be on for a while. It'll cook down. It'll yeah. get a little lumpy when you first put it in. Take your lumps. And that's it. And, and you cook it on top of the stove for anywhere from uh, an hour to hour and a half. Or if your beef needs the additional time, uh, what you can do is, let's just mix all this around. This looks a little bad at first, but believe it or not, it'll cook down and there will not be any lumps in there after you've cooked it for about two hours. But anyway, uh, it really does pretty nicely. You can cook it a little bit longer if your beef requires that, if uh, like this would, because it's almost raw beef. You would have to cook it for probably two hours to three hours. Wouldn't, wouldn't hurt to cook this all afternoon. It's not going to kill anybody. A good way to kill an afternoon. But it, look at that beautiful sauce. Isn't that beautiful? It's absolutely gorgeous. Cook it down. Thank you. Thank you, studio audience. It's a thrill. So, and when it's finished, it looks, well, it looks pretty much like that other pot there. <laughs> There's really not too much difference. But it really is a very pretty stew. It really is quite lovely. And I'm going to go on ahead here and get us a couple of bowls out. And we'll go from there. Oh, good. Well, I'm over here. I'm going to butter my cornbread. And oh, you, that's right. We have cornbread. I'd forgotten about that. Got to have the cornbread with are. the chili. Is it hot enough to butter, or is the oh, butter yeah. just going to sit there oh, and look I, at I me? I think it's no. It's not hot enough to really uh -huh. do it. But I've got it if you want to do it. Uh, here, let me have this. One lump or two. two. Uh, well, I'll put this right here. Doris. What a delicate, wonderful presentation of the butter we have today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. let me try this. How is it? Mm, that is wonderful. But have you ever met? Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a cornbread that you didn't like? No. If it's made out of corn, it's got to be good. Ooh, the chili is wonderful too. The beef got done. I cooked mine for about three hours or so, and I also cut them up a little bit smaller because I was in a big hurry. But. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a wonderful stew? Oh, that is great. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have got a bell ringer on this one. Mm -hmm. this, this is delicious. And what a wonderful meal for a cold uh, winter night or an autumn night. Ooh, this would be terrific. And if you don't have, if you're watching this in the middle of the summer, turn the air conditioner all the way up. Put on a sweater. Absolutely. And, <laughs> need this. and put on some Christmas music mm -hmm. or some sleigh mm -hmm. ride by Leroy mm -hmm. Anderson or something. It'd it. be good any time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Larry, this is delicious. Isn't that nice? I and really do like it. If you use real, real lean stew beef, mm -hmm. you're not going to be in fat trouble nearly as much. And if you did it with chicken, and, and that is a possibility. That's right, you could do that. That would even be better. And the use of olive oil, if you don't use too much, is really good because that's a good oil. And um, I mean, you know, this, this can be a real heart conscious, healthy meal if you're careful with it. So. We, uh, I think we, we've hit the jackpot. Well, thank this heavens, time. Doris is bringing serve some serve over pasta and rice. It mm -hmm. says, and I forgot that part. <laughs> That's right. It does <laughs> say serve it over pasta and well, whoever you don't need to you eat it out of a bowl. That's what mm -hmm. I'm doing. And Save just... yourself a whole step if you want to. Mm -hmm. But if you, if really and truly, if you want to have your rice and eat it too, you should serve mm -hmm. it over pasta and rice. I forgot all about that part. Well, it's okay. It doesn't really hurt anything. I mean, is it going to kill you not to have it over pasta or rice? No, Brother Ursel would probably put it right over the cornbread. Mm -hmm. You could cut That's the right. cornbread and put it on your in your soup plate and just hog out. Just wonderful. Well, we want to thank you all for stopping in again to see us, and we'll be back the next time. Well, it's just been so wonderful, and ah. I just can't tell you. Ah. <laughs> Get out of town. Well, I always like having a recipe that works out real well. And it does. And these it are does good. Indeed. What is this flower you've got That's here? A, a what? Orchid. orchid. 
This is an orchid too? Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that just a prissy little, isn't that gorgeous? Dor Doris grows orchids among other things. There's a little miniature orchids, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't want to wear gorgeous. that one to the ball, but you no. definitely, especially in the pot like that. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, thank you all for coming over or wherever you came from and, and you can go back there now. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Bye.